Such a beauty. Hello guys, my name is Kevin and welcome to another episode of For Dummies. Today featuring the Rim World. Rim World. Rim World. Give me a second. Rim World. Rim world. In my previous video I said that I'll finally make a video that's not about War of Tanks. I said it as if none of these even existed. Whatever, they sucked anyways. But now back to Rim World. The Rim World is a game with one simple go. Survive and get out of here as quickly as possible. Seems like a family meeting to me if you didn't ask. But here, unlike in a family meeting, you got no auntie Olga, which makes you want to bleach your eyes upon a mere sight of her. Gee. Here you can either start as some random tribe, crash land or land as a rich explorer on a planet that just happens to be somehow magically the exact copy of Earth that just had his hair done, got drunk and ended on the other side of a Milky Way. Either that or I got no explanation of how can be the wall freaking ecosystem of this planet the same as the one found on Earth. Still though, this game is all about a survival, whether with or without Auntie Olga. But even without her, you'll often struggle to find food and will be often attacked by raiders from the other factions. The frequency and harshness of attacks obviously depends on the difficulty set the game on before starting it. But that's not all, as at the same time you will have to fight against different natural forces such as disasters, random negative effects, illogical degenerates and much, much more. And here I thought that I don't make any sense. When you first start a game, you'll be met with this super simple menu which looks like it was made by me. Instead of it, you'll just have to click ignore and buy the fucking game, you fucking peasant. I got an advert just to show you the screen, so enjoy it. As you click on a new game, you'll be capable of selecting one out of three scenarios. The Bitcoin value, Slovak parliament or an average EA customer. The game will tell you that they differ in difficulty, but trust me, they are roughly equally as difficult. The main thing in which they differ is the length of a game, as each of them will make you start with a different level of research. The harder research level, the less time you got till the end of a game. But just like in Skyrim, you are the godlike cog that will not finish the story and will decide to play for a shits and jiggles instead. Am I right? I know I am. What these scenarios change is basically just a survey of game. As the Lost Tribe, you'll start with some religious message indicating that you somehow anger the gods and because of that you had to flee from your original settlement. Or in other words, you get raided by a more developed colony which wasn't using bananas as range weapons. You start with no research and you can build only the most basic structures needed for survival. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the items you start with include only a very little silver, three random pets with suicidal tendencies and pemmican, which is digestible, I guess? I got no idea what this meatball lookalike thing is composed of and uh, no, I, I, I don't I don't wanna find out. No. It's basically a hash made of fat. Jesus Christ, I'd rather eat a tree just so I don't have to eat this. Then you got a crash landed scenario, which serve basically everything mediocre. Just the complete every Joes of this planet that got stuck in the 70s with their love for afros. However, don't let their simple looks fool you, because they are the only ones with a special event happening at the beginning of a game. This event makes it possible for you to pick up scraps over a destroyed ship, and does give you some free loot at the beginning of a game. Free loot! Sadly, I forgot about it at the start of my series. And lastly, you got the literal Lero, a guy with balls big enough to jump on an unexplored planet just to go full Bear Grylls mode and survive the shit out of this planet while drinking his own piss and eating worms, cause you know, why not? Just kidding, it's a guy that spent his whole life in neuro simulations, computer games and has free orgies. Free orgies! I'm not even kidding, that's literally what it says in a game, I'm not making this stuff up. That and also something about how he wanted to feel the real world like the one he saw in history books. However, judging by his appearance of a Michelin man, I get a feeling that the only book he has ever read was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The rich explorer is, well, rich, so he will start with the highest amount of everything but pets and colonists. This will allow you to have a quick game where you either end within 3 hours of starting it by leaving the planet victorious or die within 2 hours 
numbers thanks to lack of proper defense. Either way, it's going to be a quick game, so prepare for that. After picking a scenario, you will get to pick an AI Storyteller, or in other words, the person which has the difficulty scaling. Here you can pick from the regular Cassandra Classic, which has an increasing difficulty curve, so we won't have to worry about hordes of raiders attacking you straight from the get-go. However, she will send manhunter packs after you, which straight from the start of a game are a much, much bigger threat than some random group of retards that jump into every other trap of yours thinking like, Harry! I'm coming in! Fuck! No, you get manner packs instead, but that's not all. Or more precisely, not all of them, since do you know what comes after a successful manhunter attack? Animal Frenzy. And then, more manhunters. And then, you guessed it, manhunter deers? Just chill the fuck down, alright? Wait, is there a rabbit? Now it's personal. Then you get a Foyab Chillax, which is like the easy version of Cassandra. Well, what she does is basically giving you more room for growing your colony and that's basically it. And so 3 rays per year she will send 2, and so 4 random negative effects per year you will get 1, and so on. Simply said she's like Cassandra but more human. I don't know whether I like it or I'm disgusted by a humanly AI. The biggest threat in Foab's case aren't the raids, manhunter packs or anything like that. No, it's the suspense. She's simply the kind of a person that likes to keep you waiting, like for 1, 2, 3, well, a lot. If you play with the Cassandra and you are attacked by let's say two raiders, you just know that the next raid is like two, maybe three months away and they'll come in free. But in Foab's case, it just doesn't work like that. She will send one and she's straight at the start of a game and then you won't hear a thing from her for the following two years. And then all of a sudden there's like a million of raiders swarming your colony. Wait, those are beavers. But you get a point. And lastly, we got the Randy Random, which as the name suggests, makes up a random story that's either gonna give you so many new free colonists that you are going to starve to death, or you'll be attacked by a Manhunter pack right after a Manhunter pack. It reminds me of someone. But simply said, he sends a random amount of enemies with a random level of equipment at you at a random frequency. This way, it's all about luck and even an experienced player might die within just minutes of starting on the easiest difficulty. Sometimes though, I'd still choose him over Cassandra because really, even he has some limits, so he will have a chance to win the game. Then you said the difficulty with just one simple thing, increase the speed of difficulty scaling, or in Randy's case, just increase the probability of a fucking Adam Jensen attacking you straight from the get-go. Then click on next, which will take you to this screen, which is, I think, pretty self-explanatory by itself, so let's skip till we will find something which we might be interested in looking at, such as finding a town where you'd like to start. Choosing the best style is pure known to you, but if I had to give you a few tips, I would definitely start by saying that a hot equals good. Well, unless you are some kind of a Schwarzenegger wannabe. Cocaino. But if you ain't like me, so a guy that likes suffering at minus fucking 20, you're gonna prefer the easy way out. The hot weather allows you to meet a large variety of your future teammates, but apart from that, you got no need to have your mama size warehouses just to keep yourself from starving during winter. Remember, there's no McDonald's waiting for you outside, fat guy. Guy. Also, there is more biome than just one, so choose planes. Don't even think about any other biome, just planes. Planes all the freaking way. This thing right here is literally considered a green hell, which in my opinion is a great overestimation as this thing is as true as saying that a rich fucking guy with a weapon taken from a freaking Iron Man suit is the hardest scenario that there is. Sure. Sure. This region is considered difficult just because it includes mega spiders and bees, which are the only two aggressive species in the entire game. And out of these, the bees do not actually even exist, and the mega spiders are just called mega spiders. They are not really spiders. They are more like those Anubarak insectoids from World of Warcraft. They are still aggressive though. Then these things are just straight up uninhabitable cancer, and this thing is an ocean. The fuck you wanna do about that? Lastly, mountains usually mean good, or more precisely more iron, which if your face looks somewhat like this, means a dinner for the day. So yeah, they are definitely good. Oh, how I love stereotyping. They also provide you with some protection as the AIs won't attack simple rock walls, ever. And even if they are just one block thick, they'll still try to attack your doors, which got like 20 cannons pointing straight at them. And lastly, 
find a colonist that's capable of doing something. So not an unemployed artist like half of the guys I always freaking get. And now you're all set and ready to go, so why not press the starting button and start the game? And cut. Sorry I cut this video so early, but I want to have a bit of an after talk at the end of this video. And at the same time, I don't want it to be like 20 minutes long, alright? So, in my first video I said that I'm leaving World of Tanks, and I expected to receive a lot of hate thanks to that, as World of Tanks was the most popular game on my channel, ever. I was seriously hesitant to release the video at all, but in the end I grew some balls and did it. I released it. What surprised me though was the positive reaction you guys, my fanbase, had on it. The heartwarming comments, the likes. Hell, that video hasn't received a single dislike so far. They're just amazing. Thank you. But today, you have seen my first big non World of Tanks video after a whole year. It was one hell of a pain to make. I couldn't rely on my old videos to provide me with a constant supply of overused jokes. And had to actually think of new jokes to put into my video. You could, after all, see that they weren't exactly the greatest. Thanks to that, and also the fact that this game has only one type of ammunition, the potato rounds, it took me whole 11 days to make the script. 11 fucking days triple the average that I got for my scripts. God, that took so long. Not to mention the edit, which was equal as painful, but in the end I did it. And I finally know the utmost basics for making these kinds of videos. So hopefully the next video is gonna be a lot better and it's gonna be out within that typical two week schedule. Jesus, I haven't been following the two week schedule for like the past three freaking months. What the fuck do I expect for myself? So though, that's it for today, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that I'll see you next time, bye!